Welcome to No Smoke TV. Today we have a very special guest. Today we're here with King Saladin. I'm just from Philadelphia. How you feeling today, my brother? Man, I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on your platform, brother. Thank you for stopping by. And let me take that back. You one of the elite artists in the world right now. Can I be seeing your art sticks out? <laughs> man, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to get in where I fit in, bro. Nah, man. Congratulations to you on your artwork, man. Thank you, man. But being from West Philadelphia, that's like a tough neighborhood. What inspired you to get into the art and have the passion for it at such a young age? Um, well, definitely West Philly is definitely a tough area to grow up in. Any part of Philadelphia, man, I always say it's one of the hardest markets to break out of. So um, what got me inspired was I just grew up as an artist. I just always had it in me. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't something that, that really directed me toward art, but um, it was something that just came natural as a kid. And, you know, I wound up playing basketball and all things like that. Um, most inner city kids are directed to play sports and things like that. But um, art was just something that I had a passion for. And it was just something that I could do, like, naturally, like a God-given gift. So later on in life, I kind of, like, got so many different um, inspirations and people telling me to go towards this and do that to really just get me to just take it as a take it as my, my journey. And that, so you was born with that. You were saying you... You had a passion since you was a little kid. Yeah, since I was like, I remember like four or five years old, just getting wow. in trouble, writing on my walls, just all kinds of stuff, bro. It's just like, it was just something that naturally I just did. It wasn't something that I was like, oh, I'm gonna start being an artist today. You know what I mean? It was like, it was in me, bro. And you was drawing good too? Cause I remember when I was a little kid, I was drawing, and to this, to this day, I'm still drawing stick figures. Like I can't draw. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not gonna say it was really good, but it was just like something in me that I had to get out. Pretty much just like growing up in the graffiti culture. Um, Philly's like one of the biggest mural cities in the, in the country. So I've always seen a bunch of art, but I just never know how I could like bring it towards like my thing. You know what I mean? But it was just something that I did. But it's, it's definitely a talent, though, because I know there's a lot of people that try to draw, but they can't. They can try their hardest, but they can't do it. So what yeah. do you what goes through your mind and what do you see when you when you like creating art? What do I see? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. It was always like my zone out, man. You know, what I mean, like being from West Philly, I, I lost a lot of friends early to, you know, to the streets and things like that. So um, it was like more of a a therapy for me you know what I mean like it was something that I did that you know I didn't get paid for it was just something that like when things are going bad I was just always stay in the house and just like write down ideas and draw concepts and different things like that bro like I really couldn't give you that like perfect answer but I don't know man it was just like knowing where we come from you know we don't have a lot of things given to us definitely didn't grow up with a silver spoon so um I figured early in my life, I had to do something that was like a God-given talent. Like basketball, I had to learn how to play basketball. Over years, I got good um, with art as well. But it was more of a situation where it was like, I wanted to like get better. I wanted to learn to get better. Like just a personal thing. You know what I mean? Hey, you talk about basketball. I see you was real good in basketball too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. What made you put your love of art to the side and pursue basketball? Could I see... I wanted to get into the the, the audible mobile accident that you got into that made you right. get back into art, but what made you put art to the side and get into basketball? Was it your community? Like you being young from a rough neighborhood and you, you know, that was the thing to do? Um, Well, definitely art wasn't the thing to do because when I would do it, people <laughs> would be like, yo, where does it come from? You know what I'm saying? Like, where did yeah. you learn how to do this? But um, me being in an uh, automobile accident when I was 15 with my mom, we got hit by a drunk driver when I was like bugging my mom to go get like, um, it was like a class trip I remember. And it was like, I was bugging her to go get a Versace t-shirt from like South Street. So South Street is like kind of a far distance from where we was living and it was pouring down rain. And I remember her just telling me a million times like, no, no, it's raining outside. No, 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 no. And I'm just like going back and forth like, yo, I need this shirt. I need this shirt. So, um, the automobile accident happened with me trying to just get fly for, for a class trip and um, just came out of nowhere, bro. So around that time, I was like 15. So I was probably like ninth grade going into my 10th grade year. And um, that was the one time where I had a lot of time to like reflect and think on like what I would want to do if basketball wasn't 
the thing that I was going to pursue. You know what I'm saying? Like, other than that, you just ripping and running. You just not really thinking about the future. So I had like a few months to like rehabilitate from the accident. And that really got me like thinking and getting me back to like writing in my black books and things like that. Cause I was like, I was in the hospital for about a month. And then for about two months, I was at my grandmother's house, just getting like, just healing up. You know what I'm saying? It was a really bad car accident. So um, that's the time I think I reconnected with the love of art. And with, with that being said, fast forward, who was J, JP Thompson? Could I see he was a big person in your life that actually he gave you, he fronted you some money to, mm -hmm. for, for your first professional art materials to get you started on the right track. So who is he to you? Could I see he was like a big, you know, inspiration in your life. So who was, who is he to you? So JP was like, JP was my best friend at the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, Met him at 15, we used to go skating. Um, I, I just remember meeting him at the skating ring and then from there, we just like always linked up. And he was like from a different part of the city. So he moved to West Philadelphia, but he was from like the Mount Airy area. So the Mount Airy area would be like the suburbs of Philadelphia. Oh, the nice so, part. Yeah, so he's seen like so many different things. So he was way more cultured than all of us. You know, all we knew was like sports and girls and just like hanging out. And he was one of the guys that he played tennis. He knew about art. His family was Quakers. You know what I'm saying? It was like he just came with a oh. whole nother wave. You know what I'm saying? His, his grandmother was a Holocaust survivor. So he was telling me about stuff like this. When I'm like, the what? The Holocaust? What is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, So he was one of them dudes that like just knew so much more than all the other kids in the hood. And um, when he seen my art ability, he was just like, bro, this is something different. From like 15 to like my 20s. You know what I'm saying? One of my biggest fans playing basketball, he used to like, you know, bet everybody, yo, my, I got five grand on my man against any of y'all. You know what I'm saying? He was that type of guy. And um, uh, JP was just like, bro, he was like the best, the best, best friend ever, bro. Like, so when you talk about the, um, he he invest, invested some money into me, this was years later. This was, um, it was this 2011, I left my job. So we talking from 15 to about 25 ish, 24. Wow. And um, he used to always tell me like, yo bro, like nobody's gonna be able to see your talent if you at work all day. He used to call my job the plantation. So he's like, yo, <laughs> when you are ready to leave the plantation, bro, I'm gonna make sure that you pay your car note. I know that you's worried about paying your car note and all those other little necessities and things like that. So he's like, yo, if you get the balls to literally quit your job, bro, I'm gonna make sure that you'll have some, some cushion. You know what I'm saying? So. I quit my job 2014, um, July 4th. And I remember calling him when I left the building. And I was just like, bro, I left the job. And this is like seven months after him telling me to leave because I'm not the guy that's just gonna be like, oh, my man gonna give me some money, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Basically. Cause I'm not like the guy that's like, okay, as soon as I run out of the money, it's like, you let me borrow another thousand yeah, another yeah. dollars, another $500. Yeah. So it really took me to really like believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like really believe in my, in my ability to like leave my job. And he was that guy that like was like, bro, meet me over at my spot. I got you. I remember he gave me four thousand dollars in ten dollar bills, bro, and I stuffed it <laughs> in my cargo pockets and went straight to the art store, bro. So, um, he was just like, wow, that best friend, that supporter, that person that was like he wanted to see all his friends' dreams come true. And that he did, and he trusted you too because he gave you money, ten dollars, and not knowing any other kid. I'm asking your advice. Any other kid from Philly gets four thousand dollars in times. What they gonna do? Get a fresh outfit, buy, you know, take a shorty out. You went straight to the art store and got busy. So bro, straight to the art store, went in my mom's basement. Ain't nobody seen me for weeks. I was just creating and painting. It's like the first time that I ever had like the actual like time and energy and space to just really create. You know what I mean? Other than that, it was like going to work, trying to do this, trying to do some stuff when I get off of work. It was just like it just wasn't happening. So he had the vision, bro. Like Bro, once you are able to like really live what you're doing, it's gonna come, it's gonna really happen. And it didn't really happen like like a snap of a finger. You know what I'm saying? Over years, it was just me having the time and the ability to like go to Miami. Now I got some money. Now I can go to Cali. I can do all these things. Like I was sleeping on all my friends' couches, bro, for years, just trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So um and him passing away untimely from cancer in 2013. That was like the middle point because he got me to quit my job in 11 and he passed in 13. So it was like a crossroad where I was like, damn, 
am I going to stop this journey? Am I going to make a bunch of excuses? Or am I just going to go super hard? And my biggest thing was to go super hard because it was like, that boy would have been rolling over his grave if I stopped the mission. You know what I mean? So that was like one of those um, inspirations that come with a, a heavy price. You know what I'm saying? And I see you dedicated the JP Bear to him. Them little figures. Yeah. yeah definitely. How much of things is going for? Um, so we, I had, so, all right, I got to go back. So the JP Money Bear, um, it started with paintings. It started with t-shirts, paintings, all different things like that. And just like developing the brand. And then um, I got an opportunity to create a toy because I'm a big fan of Cause, Ron English, all these other big artists that was like um, going into the toy world where they was already in the toy world. So I just was like, yo, I want to create some type of a figure to represent JP, you know what I'm saying? That everybody can have a piece of, like a good luck charm to, uh, kind of thing. And um, we went to China in 2017 to start working on it. And then I remember we went back to China in 2018 to like finish it up, color scheme, just getting everything totally together. And um, like, so 2018, we released it in Shenzhen and then in China, and then we released it in New York. So when we released it, all these different places, they sold out. It was like almost like some heavenly type situation, bro, because I didn't have the marketing behind me. I didn't really, I, you know, I wasn't like a big artist at that time, but I had a following. So um, I think it was really the story and the visual, you know what I'm saying? Like the visual of it was dope, but the story behind it, I think just added on, man. And it was just like, so many people was just like connected to it just by like, you know, I think everybody's been affected by some type of a cancer in their family, their friends, they heard of somebody passing away from cancer. So it was like, it was one of those things that was visually dope, but definitely had an amazing meaning behind it that everybody could wrap up into their own story. And that was that's very meaningful, bro, to make yeah. that beard that beard specifically for the cancer awareness for your friend. Yeah, so, definitely, bro, definitely. And since we talk about the bear, I have to ask you, what inspired the bear? Okay, so what inspired the bear was okay. So me and JP, right? When I was um when I was working, so when I was working, I used to have all these black books and I used to jot down ideas and thoughts and just like what I would do if I wasn't working type thing, right? So um. One day he came into my mom's basement and that's where my studio was for, for many years. Um, I was in love with like abstract art. So he used to look at all my paintings and be like, yo, these is dope, but I can't really like see that you did these. If I seen this somewhere else in the world other than your mom's basement, I wouldn't know you did it because abstract art is pretty much like, it looks kind of similar. It's colors, blends, scrapes, all kinds of different stuff like that. And he was talking to me about Brandon before I even knew what Brandon was. So he was like, why did you buy that sweatshirt? And I had a Nike sweatshirt on, you know what I'm saying? Nike sweatsuit. And I was like, I don't know, it matched my sneakers. He was like, you bought it for the swoosh though. You know what I'm saying? Like the swoosh is recognizable to Nike. Like you need an Apple sign, bro. You need something that like people can see this in Africa and know it's you without asking somebody or seeing a signature or something like that. And um, he was looking through my books and I was like recreating the college dropout bear for some reason, bro. I just had like yeah. Kanye West's album cover in my back pocket or in my book bag at the time. And I was just recreating it, like changing the eyes, changing the shape of the face, um, putting, you know, Mitchell and Ness clothing on the bear and things like that, just making it like mine. You know what I mean? And he seen it and was like, bro, this is, this is it. And I'm just like this, you know what I mean? Cause it was like totally not put together. And I'm just like, this right here? What about these paintings? He's like, oh, these paintings is cool, but bro, I, it ain't it ain't really connecting to me. So when he seen a bear, he was like, bro, I can see this on everything. I can see it on book bags. I can see it on sweatshirts. I can see it on, you know, pretty much like a branding icon. So that's where it came from, but it didn't, I didn't start really working on it until I'm going to say, we might have had this talk in like 2010-ish. And I really didn't start working on it until after he passed away because I remember the conversations that we had about the bear and just like him saying that, yo, I can see this everywhere. So it's probably about two, 2014-ish when I started really like painting the bear, putting it on sweatshirts, getting things like printed and all types of stuff like that. And I didn't even think about toys at that time because coming from the hood, you know, toys is like, you know, like Hot Wheels and yeah. uh, G.I. Joe, Joe and all that yeah. kind of stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> So it just was like something that evolved, bro. And it was like crazy because it was came from all the conversations we had in my mom's basement. That is a crazy story. So if it wasn't for the college, Kanye's college dropout album, 
Yeah. And your man JP pushing you, that bit would have came into fruition. It wouldn't have came. It, nah, definitely not because it was just something I was just drawing just for fun. You know what I mean? It was like re um, re imaging something for my likeness. You know what I'm saying? While I was bored at work, bro. Honestly. Wow. And he's yeah. JP was right too because as soon as I see that bit, I think of you and your painting. So that's like that's, your signature. Right? That's like your Nike sign right there, basically. Like he said. Nah. That's the Nike <laughs> sign. That's that's the Apple sign, the Nike sign. That's the Pepsi sign. That's like what people know me of. You know what I mean? Like, um, I do other art. We just had a solo show in Philadelphia, which was totally not like my pop art side. It was more contemporary. It was more um, speaking on my life, playing basketball, growing up in the inner city, losing friends, uh, mass incarceration, equality. It was all the things that like all of us grow up with. You know what I'm saying? So. I think the JP Money Bear was like the launching pad for people to like recognize my art and for me to get like these corporate deals and things like that to get me to the point where I can like create freely without having to like keep doing the bear and keep doing the bear. You know what I mean? Because for a while people was just like, yo, that's the bear guy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just thinking <laughs> my stuff like, bro, this was an idea in my black book that I just took to the moon. But there's, so many, <laughs> but there's so many other things that I can do. So this year was like really one of the years that I can like, um, like really dive into like my story, my story. You know what I mean? I see, I see you did with that, that painting you just, um, did with the, um, basketball saved my life. Yeah. Yup. Yep. That was a real dope painting right there, my brother. Thank so you, man. With, with that being said, the Lamborghini that you painted, what inspired that? Was that like a project for like an art show? Or was that something you like, I just, I just want to paint my Lamborghini and have it looking different out here? No, actually that was my friend's Lamborghini. So 2016, I started painting supercars. I had the opportunity, um, my manager, they own a concierge service. So when I went to New York, I started meeting all these 1% dudes, dog. Like between me and you, they was like the riches of the rich dudes that I've ever met in my life, right? So. I would do one or two paintings for him. And then the conversation came where it was like, yo, you think you can paint my car? And I'm like, I'm from Philly, so I'm not turning down nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, had, I had no clue how to do it or like the process behind it. But the first car that I had did, I think was a Rolls Royce Ghost. And then from there, it was like, it turned out good. So then other people that own paintings from me that had like dope ass cars, they was like, yo, you want to paint my Lamborghini? You want to paint my Ferrari? You want to paint this? And then it just came into a thing where it was like, I was known for like really painting like supercars. So that got me a little, another notch on the art world because a lot of people wasn't, wasn't doing that at the time. You know what I'm saying? So, um, this Lamborghini was, uh, a client slash friend from Miami that I painted his car art bezel 2000, I think 17. He had a Lamborghini Huracan at the time. And now he had just got his, um, a SVJ. So that's a big difference in cars. That's like probably 300,000 to like 800,000. You know what I mean? So he hit me up when we was out Art Basel. I had a bunch of corporate stuff to do. And um, he just hit me up on the DM like, bro, I got a new I got a new Lambo. You think you want to paint it? And I ain't painted a car probably like in at least, I haven't painted a car since the pandemic started. So I was like hyped to do it, but I was kind of like, damn, I, I ain't really got the feel for it. I haven't done it in a while. But again, I'm like, bro, yeah, what are we meeting up? How much you got? It was one of those types. Of <laughs> so, so um, we wound up doing that at um, shout out to Fat, um, shout out to Metro Raps. Metro Raps is a spot in Miami where um, I grew with them, and I did his last Lambo at Metro Raps. But this was before they had like this big area where they do all these raps for cars. Um, so it was like the perfect environment, bro. It was the perfect timing, and this is a crazy story. So, um. We in the strip club all night in Miami, right? <laughs> King and of Donald? He, no, we was in uh, Tootsie's. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We, we, we was in Tootsie's. My, one of my guys owns Tootsie's. So we was in there like all night going crazy. He hits me up in the midst of us out that night. And I'm like, oh, man, I probably had a little bit too much to drink, had a little too much fun. I don't know if I could do it tomorrow. So he was like, I'm only free tomorrow. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to get it done. So that morning I had the biggest headache, bro. I had the biggest like uh, hangover ever, bro. So it was, <laughs> it was one of those situations where I was like, I wasn't even feeling it. And all my stuff, like all my materials and everything is at my studio in Jersey. So I had to go get everything from all these art stores early in the morning. Uh, crazy ex headache. Exhausting. Crazy. I had to pray on it, bro. I was like, God, please let me just kill this car because I'm like, I'm not feeling it, you know what I mean? And it just wound up being like one of the fastest cars that I painted. 
And it was just like a fun vibe. I had a bunch of my homies down there. Everybody comes down for Art Basel with me. And um, it was just, it was just, just rolling, bro. I put on some, fu- we put on some future on the surround sound. <laughs> we had video in, in my zone. We had videographers. It was like perfect, bro. And it wound up being like really, really cool. And how much was the ticket for that? Uh, I hate to talk about prices, man, but it was, it was nice. It, it, was, it was a nice, it was a nice ride. Listen, I, I I painted the car in three hours, so I probably never made that much money in three hours ever. So it was it was a good job. It, it was, was a good, good job. Yeah, yeah. Since you don't want to talk about prices, do you have any paintings for like a regular Joe Smo like me to pop? Or are they all at uh? Uh-huh. Nah, you're not a Joe Schmo. Stop it. Stop it, man. Stop it. <laughs> well, I be um, seeing, listen, I be seeing the prices. I be like, Whoa, I'm not, I can't pay no 100000 <laughs> so, so, So a lot of my original paintings are pretty up there because, you know, original paintings are one of one, hand painted. It's just like, you know, certain number. But um, I also do a lot of uh, replicas and prints. And we do hand hand embellished prints and things like that. So a lot, of, a lot of the pieces that I usually do that are like really big that can't fit in like a regular home and people might not buy it. it might be like go to a museum or something i usually make prints of those so if it's something like a six by six which would be like a very very big wall in somebody's house um that limits me to like people being able to buy it or people being able to acquire it um we usually do prints so the prints are around like fifteen hundred dollars when i hand touch the prints they're like thirty five hundred dollars so that's something that is for the masses you know what i mean so i wanted to make sure that I had something for people that could like, um, and it's also an investment as well because it's only a uh, addition of like 99, you know what I mean? The hand embellished are only addition of 10. So these are like super investable situations that you can get for a low price point, you know what I mean? Um, also the toys, that's another price point. I wanted to like put tiers. Like when I look at like, like um, influences and things like that, like I love Ralph Lauren, you know what I mean? So it's like, you can get, you can get a, you could be a purple label guy. You know what I'm saying? Where a jacket might be five thousand dollars or a shirt might be like fifteen hundred dollars, but you can also get polo sport, where a jacket might be three hundred and fifty dollars and a shirt might be a hundred dollars. Then you can get chaps. Then you can get, you know what I mean? So I always looked at like my artists where I wanted to have tears, where it's like you don't have to have a million dollars to be able to buy one of my paintings, um, and I also have other things to offer people you know what i mean toys we did baseball cards with tops those were 20 bucks you know what i mean so it's like entry levels for kids too you know what i mean for kids that might be the next one percent and they have a baseball card of mine and then when they get to the level of you know what i just bought my new home i want to get some art i remember collecting king saladin's artwork five ten years ago i want to get an original now so i always wanted to have something that was like an entry point for people and have nobody left out you know what i mean because art's something that like i want everybody to have and i come from the hood bro so i understand when you you know a lot of people don't have 20 30 40 thousand dollars to pay for a painting you know what i mean but i still want my art to grace their homes or be in their collection as well you know what i mean i'm definitely going looking to get like a little small painting i can put back here for you i'm a high we got you you. (laughs) we got you i I got you bro we got you appreciate it man um, before we get out of here, I want to tell them, do you have any advice to the, to the youth that, that young kid in the urban community that could draw, that could paint, but you know, he started coming to his, his environment. The kids is tell is, you know, they're making fun of him saying that's not cool. What right. advice do you give to that kid? Um, the advice I would probably give to one, one, a kid, boy, girl, um, or an older person as well. That's like, you know, thinking that they can't like live out this dream is, like sometimes you just gotta pursue it, bro. You just gotta really pursue it. And I think, um, let me get my thoughts together. Um, I just think like, if you got the faith, bro, if you got the faith and the ability, it's really up to you. You know what I'm saying? Cause the only person that can really stop you from like accomplishing your dream is you. You know what I mean? Like when I first started, everybody wasn't like, Yo, you should be doing this. You know what I mean? It was something that I had inside of me that I was like, yo, I think I've had daydreams about this. So if I have daydreams, I think I think daydreams are like God giving you like short clips of what can be in the future if you pursue it. You know what I mean? So I would just say just like pursue your dreams. Um, I don't want to sound cliche. You know what I mean? But like everything starts with an idea and then you work that idea. You know what I'm saying? You spend time on that idea. 
sometimes get outside of your element because I think leaving Philadelphia was one of the biggest things for me, ego wise, that was like, I don't care no more. I don't really care because you know, Philly, New York, other places, wherever you're from, inner city, it's like ego is a big thing. You don't want people to think that you're not cool. You don't want people to think like, I'm not getting money or I'm not fly or I'm not getting, I can't get the best girl or I can't wear the best clothes. You know what I'm saying? I think getting outside of Philadelphia was one of the things where it was like sleeping on my cousin's couch um, while he was at work all day, me walking around in Florida, just telling people what I did. And it was a good thing because this is when social media started. You know what I mean? So social media now is a big thing where you can kind of like reinvent yourself or invent yourself through social media. You know what I mean? And, the people that know you might not even know that you had this gift or this kind of like idea of what you wanted to do. So um, me personally, I just think like, man, just you got to just cut out all like all the all the crowd, the crowd noise and just pursue what you want to do. And if it's really what you want to do, there's nothing that's going to stop you, man. So I just say just pursue your dreams, um, kill your ego a little bit because ego definitely kills dreams. Um and learn how to like utilize whatever you're doing as a business as well. Like I'm a little bit different because I've always been like, like a hustler, like a hustler. You know what I mean? I always wanted to make a dollar out of 50 cent, about a dollar out of 25 cent. So um, I never looked at art as one of those things where it was like, I'm going to do this art and I'm going to make a bunch of money. It was never that idea. It was more like, I want to show how people, how talented I am. You know what I mean? And, and what comes from that is the gift, is, is, is the blessing. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had no idea that I could be able to sell a painting for $500, bro. Like when I was younger, you feel what I'm saying? So I think God just leads you in the, when you're in the right direction and pursuing your dream, God brings people that's going to help you elevate and help you elevate. Just like Orin, you talk to Orin, Orin's my manager. Yeah. And, uh, I met Orin in like, two, I met Orin in like 2014. He was buying a piece of art. You know what I mean? And it just genuinely happened that he knew people that would like, understand what I was doing. He knew the 1% of New York. So that's how I started, you know, selling these pieces and getting involved in these art shows and all this kind of stuff. But prior to that, bro, I was selling t-shirts out of my trunk. I was uh, selling art in Philadelphia. It's this thing called First Fridays where um, you can sell your art on the street in front of all the galleries in like downtown Philly. I was doing all that type of stuff. Um, JP told me to actually do that. You know what I mean? He was like, bro, it's a spot called, it's this, this day of the month is the first the first week of every month is first Friday. So the first Friday of every month, you're able to sell art outside. And it's just like people with money just coming by and buying stuff. And, and I'm like, yeah. And like, he like, bro, I'm telling you, I think you need to go out there and sell some of your art. So the first time I went out there, of course, my ego, I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to sell no art outside on the street. Like that shit corny. You know what I mean? He like, bro, I'm telling you, I think people, you'll run into the right people because you don't know no artist, but you're an artist. So you got to start running into artists, running into people who are buying art for them to see what you're doing. You know what I mean? So I think it was just like kill your ego and just do some things that you don't want to do. I think every good thing happens to a person when you kind of pursue something and you're doing something outside your comfort zone. You know what I mean? Because when you're in your comfort zone, it's kind of like ain't too much going to come to you uh -huh. with sports, business, talent, any of that. You know what I mean? So I just think like get outside your comfort zone, um, believe in what you're doing. Handle yourself as a business and just know your worth a little bit. You know what I mean? And I think it'll come. Well, well said, my brother. Great words from the King Saladin, the great himself, man. Get Thank out you. Your, get out your comfort zone. Get rid of that ego. You yeah. heard it. Yeah. What does 2023 um, hold for King Saladin? Do you have any projects you're working on? Anything you're working on for 2023? Um, so we're working on something pretty big. I'm working with a company called... Um, Fluffer, ki fluffy killer bunnies. So they're like a, um, a installation. I can't even, I can't even really get the words or what they do. So they pretty much, they did, um, they, they created the Donda stage for Kanye West amongst oh, a whole lot of other things. And they're, and they're located in Philadelphia. So I met them about three years ago in the midst of the pandemic. And we just been going back and forth about like different things that I could, you know, um, utilize to like make an immersive, situation almost like a disney world type situation with jp so this year 2023 would be 10 years since my man passed away and um their idea was like yo we got to do something big for the 10th year anniversary you know you've been 
putting on for him. You kept his story alive. You kept his name alive. I think we need to have like something immersive where it's like somebody five years old and somebody 80 years old could come into this space and get something from it. You know what I mean? So right now we're working with a couple of venture capitalists and we're trying to raise like $3 million to do this in New York, Miami, and LA. So right. um, that's the big thing I'm working on for 2023. And... I've been blessed to have the opportunity to work on my first movie, my movie situation with Kenya Barris. So Kenya Barris is the director of um, uh, Blackish, Grownish. He directed um, Coming to America, all these black hits. Right. So he started collecting my art like 2017 and um, we got really cool. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of my collectors, we get like a relationship. We get like super cool, which is a blessing. And uh, he hit me up and was just like, yo, I want you to do the movie art. I want you to be a part of the marketing. So Art Basel, um, we did a collaboration with uh, Shoe Palace in Miami. So I did the merchandise for the movie. Um, they had the screening in Miami, the, uh, the like the early screening that everybody that's in the movie. The movie starring Eddie Murphy, um, Laura London, uh, Mike Epps. Jonah Hill. It's like, bro, it's going to be one of them cultural joints. It's called You People. So it's basically based off of um, a Jewish guy falling in love with a black girl and their family's like button heads on religion. <laughs> and it's crazy. It's like super funny. Eddie Murphy's the dad of um, of Laura London. Uh, I forget who the parents are of um, Jonah Hill. So it's Jonah Hill falls in love with Laura London and they just going back and forth about culture. But the thing is that brought them together was like sneaker culture, fashion, music, Everything that like our our generation right now can like mold and blend on right now, you know what I mean. But the parents, you know, they like sixty years old and they kind of like, well, she's not Jewish or he's not, you know. It's like it's just all about <laughs> religion and like moral thoughts and things like that. But um, that movie comes out January twenty seventh, so we got to go to L A. January thirteenth for the big screening. So that's like the first. That's like the first. Um, thing that we're going to do for uh for 2023 so it's coming out in january it's coming out january on netflix so it was a, a collaboration with netflix wow and you got netflix. eddie murphy on there bro. anything with eddie Muff murphy touches is gold man so bro it's, it's, it's crazy he, he's funny as hell he like he's like a muslim dad from the hood from west from the west coast hood bro it's like the, one of the funniest movies i've ever seen man so definitely shout out to netflix and shout out to kenya bears for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this. My art's in the movie, and um, I did the cover art. So when you go on Netflix and you kind of like picking the movie you want to pick, it's going to be my art that's that's the uh, the thing you pick. So Wow, looking forward to seeing yeah. that. What's the name of the movie from Netflix? It's called You People. You People. Look out for yep. that next month, yep. January yep. 27th, right? Yep, January 27th. It's going to be crazy, bro. It's going to be one of them cultural... It's going to be one of those movies like a Friday or like one of those joints that you're going to like be able to look at forever, bro. It's dope. Looking forward to seeing it. And um, you want to leave anybody with your social media before you get out of here? Oh, yeah, definitely. So um, on Instagram, it's King Saladin, K-I-N-G-S-A-L-A-D-E-N. -E -E um, Twitter is King Saladin dot E. Um, my YouTube page is King Saladin. Uh, what else? What else? What else? So I'm on Twitter. I, I don't have a TikTok yet. You know, and where I mean? can but, they purchase your art? Um, so right now I'm I have a show in Philadelphia that's going to be up until like mid January. It's at Corridor Gallery. So it's a few pieces like the ones I was telling you about. That's like speaks more about my life, basketball, equality, and all types of stuff like that. Um, that show will be up until like January 15th. So if you're in the Philadelphia area, definitely go down to Corridor Gallery, Dope Gallery in Frankfurt, Philadelphia. Um, other than that, um, you can always contact Orin. We do a lot of commission work and things like that. Um, I work with a few galleries, but a lot of the stuff is like solely through us. So you can definitely get all the artwork through us. You can contact Orin, contact me on my Instagram, and uh, we'll definitely make it happen. Well, there you go, people. Thank you for stopping by, King Saladin. I really appreciate you stopping by the platform, giving people definitely. some knowledge, definitely. giving people about your, your story. His art is A1. He's one of the best artists out here. Thank you, man. Blessed to have him on the platform. Thank you have you. a blessed one, my brother. Thank you, man. D dog, and once again, thank you for having me on your platform, bro. Bro, Like, seriously, I appreciate it, man. And I appreciate it, too, bro. Have a great day. Definitely. We're going to keep bro. in touch, man. Because I, I need that paper for right here. <laughs> <laughs>
Back, you need, you, need, you need something in the back. You definitely got a dope back setup, but I got you. Let me know. I appreciate it, bro. I'm going to holler at you. All right. Peace, All right, bro. Man. Thank you.